When I think of the quintessential American-made yacht, three things come to mind. One, I gotta have a country kitchen. I love its open space. What better area to spend with three generations of your family, cooking, telling stories. Secondly, an American-made yacht needs to have an outrageously big sun deck, which this boat has plenty of space. But most importantly, a great American yacht has to have a great American fishing platform. And in this cockpit, we have just that. I'm Bobby Giancola with Denison Yachting, and today I have the pleasure of showing you Odin, a 2001 Trinity 126 foot super yacht. Not only will I be going over every space on the boat today, but also I have a special guest, my friend and co-broker, Tom Robertson. Not only is Tom my good friend, but he also knows more about this boat than anybody I know. Throughout my years of yachting, this was actually the second vessel that I had ever worked on. And during my time, I acted as the engineer and mate. There's not one inch of this boat that I have not opened, worked on, or had the pleasure of entertaining in. Imagine you're getting off your plane, you're coming to the boat, my money, the first morning, this is where you're gonna start. This is like an arena for fishing. You've got your leaning post here, you've got your friends, family, watching from above, reeling them in. I'm hearing everybody hooting and hollering, so after I've pulled in my theoretical thousand pound blue marlin, this is a great spot to access your tender that is gonna be sitting on the stern and go zip off and go check out the islands and enjoy the water in a totally different way. So one of the most underrated features on this vessel is actually something that came from the factory and it's sound dampening in the entire room because while you're underway, you want things to be nice and quiet going to the next island, because if you didn't have it, you definitely wish you did. I was in here pretty regularly, just making sure that you keep up with all the regular maintenance and keeping every system operational, because while you're out at sea or island hopping, you want to make sure that there's nothing that isn't looked after. In smaller engine rooms, for the crew side of things, and really to benefit the owner, is you can access everything for maintenance, so nothing's going to get missed. I mean, for a 2001, this engine room looks phenomenal. They practically eat off the floors. Yeah. We have a brand new 65 kW John Deere generator here. On the other side, you have a rebuilt 45 kW. This is the powerhouse while you're out at sea in an anchor. Odin's actually powered by twin Cat 3412s, and some re recent work that's been done is you have new turbos, new aftercoolers, new injectors. Some of the speeds that these motors are gonna give you is a cruising speed of 12 knots and a maximum speed of 19 knots, making sure that you're comfortably getting everywhere you need to, and if you need to get away from some weather, she'll get up and go. Over here on the starboard side, a few other systems that are gonna make sure that you have all the amenities that you're looking for is we have our sewage treatment plant, our water makers, so that when you're at anchor, you can constantly have fresh water supplied to your showers, your sinks, ice makers. The water makers have all new membranes, been fully reserviced, and then down below, you have three brand new chillers that are gonna make sure that everything inside is ice cold from when you come back from a day out on the water. Coming around to the port forward quarter of the engine room, we have our hydraulic system, which is going to power your steering, your thruster, and your stabilizers, making sure that you're staying level at sea. You have your circulation and raw water pumps down below, making sure that the engines are staying cool. Finally, we have a fuel polisher down below that's going to make sure that the fuel that you take on board wherever you are is clean and efficient for making these engines purr. Last thing I want to show you here is the lazarette, where you have a workstation over to the starboard side. You have an ice maker freezer boxes for all the bait, making sure that you're bringing all the big fish. You have a shore power converter and uh, some extra storage for any other toys and life vests. So let's say it's day two. I know somebody probably forgot to put on some sunscreen. That's why this is probably one of my most favorite areas on the boat. In this space, the centerpiece has got to be this table. I'm not always a fan of square tables, and this crescent table shows why. You have all this seating where it's curved and you're face to face with your guests across, across from you, your friends and family. No one is blocked off from each other and that's what I love about this space. In the same way that the main deck foyer is the hub for the interior, this space is that but for the exterior. First, you have access down to the cockpit. Second, access to boarding the boat. Next, I love this spiral staircase that goes from the main deck to the sun deck and moving on forward, you have these weather doors offering access to the bow. Coming up onto the bow, it's gonna be short and sweet. One of the first things I wanna point out is our shore power cords. Having the access here on the bow is great. Moving forward, you can see your two 6,000 Maxwell windlasses. 
These seats right here, they don't get used often, but when they do, it's holding a glass of champagne when you're pulling into port. Considering the amount of volume on the exterior space that we've gone over today, it's still pretty mind blowing on the interior, the amount of volume that's left over on this vessel sitting at 256 gross tons. When I step into this salon, the first thing I think of is it feels like home. To me, I have a big family and it's a great area to watch TV. I love the dark tones of the mahogany wood, the massive couch. Then you have this smaller table here. I know at my house, we would set up a poker table here. Then for dinner time, this would convert into the kids table while the adults sit at the formal dining table. When the formal dining table is not set up, everything is found and stored in the cabinetry here. As you go, you'll see massive windows throughout the port and starboard side. And then following along, you'll find your day head and access to the side decks. Moving along the starboard side into the main foyer, you'll notice that the upholstery is being redone to give it more of a cozy feel. On the starboard side here to my left, we've got access to the side decks. Behind me, you have access to the helm and moving forward, the galley. Before I head into those spaces, let's go downstairs and check out the owner's cabin. Odin is a four stateroom layout with the owner's stateroom all the way aft. On the way there, you'll notice here a washer dryer. This is a coffee station with your stacked Sub-Zero refrigerators, a stew pantry, and then your entryway into the owner's stateroom. The first thing that sticks out to me is your classic nautical porthole windows on both port and starboard side. All this light really accentuates the dark mahogany wood tones seen throughout. So just aft on the port side of this desk and vanity is your first bathroom. The difference between this bathroom and the starboard side bathroom is this is a full standing shower and the starboard side is a shower and a tub. Just outside the starboard head, you'll find plenty of storage, a seating area, your TV. My favorite thing about the master is this full size walk-in closet. As you can see, tons of space for clothing and storage, but double doors open up, revealing another storage area for more clothes and a wine rack. Coming out of the master stateroom, moving forward on the port side, you'll find the twin stateroom. The highlight in here is the Pullman berth. Upon entering, when closing the door, you'll find a TV, a standing closet, and an ensuite bathroom. Coming out of the twin stateroom, moving forward, we find ourselves again in the lower foyer where it's all about cabins three and four. Entering the port side mirrored VIP, you'll find a queen size bed, a closet, and your ensuite head. Your guests are gonna be really comfortable in here. It's quiet, it's stable, yet just enough to hear water lapping on the hull sides. If this was a GM Cola trip, you'd see this whole space filled with food, family style eating. Everybody in the line, getting their servings, but behind you, you'll find full-size fridge, stove top and oven, an additional beverage fridge, your sink, as well as a dishwasher. This space isn't just great for serving food. It also serves some purpose here with a trash compactor and an additional ice maker on the other side, and also tons of storage for your cutlery and plenty of pots and pans, more enough to make a drum set with. Forward of that, you've got your breakfast eating area, awesome sectional seating here, as well as a wraparound seating forward of that. At the foot of these steps on the starboard side, these lead down to the crew area where you'll find a common area with a washer dryer and three cabins with two heads. One of the main reasons I got into yachting was to travel and explore. I just had to see parts of the world that I never thought I would be able to. During my time on board, we actually logged over 25,000 nautical miles. And most of that time we spent up in the bridge helping the captain navigate. Ironically, as we're here today, uh, I look over my shoulder and that is the captain that I operated this boat with years ago. Without Captain Dave, I actually wouldn't be here today because he gave me an opportunity to step into the mate position for the first time in my yachting career. When you're looking out at the ocean, sometimes you're wondering what color or shade you can call the water. Looking at these chairs, I think the same thing looking out at the water. It's a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, kind of dubbed it the Bahama Blues. So Odin is stabilized. Yes. And bow thruster. Mm -hmm. Four beautiful touchscreens here. 
um, that you can customize and set how you would like for navigating. You can do radar, chart plotter, depth sounder, and a camera on the aft or in the engine room to kind of monitor everything while you're underway, making sure everything's good to go. Now that we've covered the helm, we've got one last stop, and that's the sun deck. So coming up here to the sun deck, we actually have two additional upper helm stations. You have your primary navigation station here, which is where you're going to do most of your operating. It's got your nav screens, throttles, thruster, radio for communicating to other vessels in the Coast Guard. And then if you walk over to the starboard side here, we actually have a wing station. This is going to be primarily for docking. The captain's going to use this for a starboard side tie up, allowing better viewing points for distances, communicating with crew. And then after your wing station, we have a bar. Beautiful bar, seating for four. Underneath, we've got a fridge and an ice maker. This space is not just limited to the bar, but as you can see, also for entertaining. Just forward, you have a three seating lounge pad area. And then just after that, uh, alfresco dinette, seating for all your friends and family, great for entertaining. There is a sunshade that connects to all three hoisting points right here. Still leaving access to get a little extra sun for the sunbathers. And then moving aft, we have a huge service area with a barbecue. On the aft here, you have room for a huge rib tender, two jet skis, and your davit for lowering everything down. Once the toys are deployed, this area up here becomes a great space for entertaining. Wide open blank canvas to either add you know, additional seating uh, with lounge chairs or tables, uh, even a dance floor if you'd like to get down when the, when the music's playing outside. If you stuck with us this long, thank you so much. And again, Tom, thank you. It's great doing this together with you. Oh, it's been a great time. Thank you for having me. It was great to walk down memory lane. If you have any questions or would like to schedule a showing, don't hesitate to call myself or Tom and we'd be happy to show you. Thank you so much.